had my first cup of coffee yet. Azure Drake gonna be the play 460 in the face of that 411. Not that scary. Priest does have a lot of trouble dealing with that four body. But when Unless you get play, they have a 411. <laughs> this is a. Uh, this is going to be a pretty sweet deal for Dutch Boy here. Yeah. This card has just been so good. And look at this decision. Thorsan, and you can have the ice block if you fancy as well, but Thorsan with this particular hand is going to make his hand. You like the tempo already as the priest, and this is just going to get out of control. Uh, Zixo there is playing the Pyroblast because he's playing Ink Master in his deck, uh, but he's just got a handful of greedy stuff and he's going to get smashed in the face really quickly here and also the one of the things to note uh we started to talk a little bit about dutch boy's deck you mentioned that he has that dragon Age crusher in there he's also not running the dragonfire potions which right i actually like in this matchup i do really like the fact that he doesn't have those dragonfire potions uh when you're going into that reno mage it's going to really reduce a lot of the dead draws that you could have now coming in on turn six do you like the Emperor here? Just I like the Emperor. the Emperor. I'm looking at this double Blackwing Corruptor on turn 8, thinking, well, that's just 12 to face unless, Reno, unless um, Brand's gone by then. Yeah, I, I mean, and also, like, you have so many things that are going to benefit from this brand. You've already made okay. a lot, lot of leeway. I do like the Nether This is actually the right play. Whilst the brand is still available, just making the most value he possibly can. Uh, yeah, now turn 8 and turn 9 are pretty clear-cut decisions, and we can follow this up with uh, either the Twilight Wealth. Okay, I like Twilight Wealth into the heel onto Bran here. Yeah, the same thing. He's just abusing Bran while Bran is there. There's no reason to not get value. And actually, he's making sure that if he loses to... If, if Flame Strike somehow clears after a Blizzard into Arena, he's going to have enough value to do it all again. That's, that's his plan right now. He should win, but if he doesn't win, he'll win. Yeah, his board is so sticky just, just that, yeah. that we can say absolutely ridiculous things that don't make sense in the English language because he, he's got it. LB Dutch Boy looking really good. It looks like he's probably going to go up 2-0 against 6-0. Yeah, that will settle his nerves first thing in the morning. Um, I, I never envy the guys in groups C and D at things like this where they have to sit around for a day waiting to get into the action, watching everybody else playing. I will say, though, in an event like this, it can be a potential advantage because we uh -huh. were joking around about it a lot little bit uh, just a few seconds ago being jet lag not knowing what time it is right. if you're in those later groups that's a very real factor you get to relax a little bit get used to the area get used to China I mean it's not a familiar surrounding for a lot of uh -huh. these players but as we're talking Dutch boy just rumbling on through going to bring 6-0 all the way down to 5 forcing him to most likely play Reno this turn otherwise he's just dead yeah and he's gonna be just left with his rogue deck to find one win with and Rogue Deck's pretty good at finding one win most of the time, especially when they've got to play again. Well, there's going to be a Mirror, there's going to be a Mage, and there's going to be a Pirate Warrior. So Rogue could just go 0-3. Zigzo definitely has a lineup that can reverse sweep here, but a Dutch Boy will be very, very, very happy to get off to this early. So it's not much fun playing against one of the best players in the world when you're playing for so much money first thing in the morning. So 6 does have that Flame Strike in his hand. He also does have the Frost Nova. We already did say, see him play that Doomsayer, so he doesn't have the option of getting that Doomsayer Frost Nova combo off. But this hand, Dutch Boy just has such a gas hand here. This is actually difficult to play because you're being distracted by all the different sorts of value you can get, and you want to make sure you all get... All these pretty gold dragons, but look, he's going to... Pick up another two bombs here. Chromagus into Chromagus being an option here. Absolutely bonkers. Two Chromagus, a Ysarian, and a Farian as bombs. He already has too many bombs. He's just like, I just need two drops. Just yeah, just something I can actually get out of my hand because my hand is just full of stuff. And Brand look at this damage. Came down, did Brand come down on turn two off a of coin? Yes, it did. So and it he came, just came down turn two off of a coin. We are in turn eight. Bran has affected every card on the side of Dutch Boy. That's value. So Somebody call us. <laughs> the value police are on the way. And they're not impressed. And Zigzo has managed to deal with all that, but now he's got to find a way of getting through this second wave. And now Emperor Thorsan doesn't often sit, sit in hand from turn six, seven, eight, nine without coming onto the table, but uh, and, Dutch Boy's just abused Bran and I don't blame him. D Dutch Boy just figuring out how he wants to finish off six over here. Yeah? Like, you could, you could justify pretty much any one of those bombs in this particular scenario. Trying to work out how Zigzo could ever get back into this here. Uh, it involves a lot of freezing and a pyroblast, I tell you that much. 
yeah, definitely uh, maybe getting some value off of that Antonitis, maybe having a, a nice roll off of good old Firelands Portal. Been a super impressive card since it yeah. did come out. I, I really do like that card. Now, yeah, I'm not sure. Getting Raza is pretty interesting as well. Yeah, he's going to have to work out. Like, he's playing to his 1% here, and that's sometimes really difficult. It's not a situation you practice. Uh, you, you, know, you practice how matchups work, and Ziggs just trying to work out how he can not die for the maximum amount of time, and then he'll find a way to possibly generate some fireballs, but he's got to find that way now and play to whatever his out is. Maybe Kazakus is an out somewhere along the line. I just feel like he's in the position right now where Dutch Boy can play pretty conservative on the board, slowly use all the bombs he has. He doesn't have to slam them all down at yeah. once, and then eventually six of The thing with Reno Mage is it doesn't have a bunch of draw. It does have a lot of answers, and it discovers a lot of cards, but you're just not going to find enough answers to all of these bombs over time. He can stall with this ice block here, potentially start to get some value with the Archmage Antonidas. I'm just laughing. I'm looking at this hand, and there's Frostbolt, Forgotten Torch, and Fireball in the hand of the Priest. Yeah, and we had, we had Raza on the board of the mage. <laughs> We're this all over the how place they today. taught me priest work when <laughs> I was at school. And finally, Dutch Boy is going to win the game. He throws out some BM as well. Don't get too cocky, Dutch Boy. You're playing Zixo, man. Have some respect. And also, <laughs> it, like like you said, Zixo could come out with a rear sweep right now. But I feel like Dutch Boy's pretty well suited having that rogue and an interesting rogue list at that. Mention the fact Shaku is in this deck and we haven't seen much of shaku here in china no we haven't seen much at all actually of shaku so Which if he makes gets established sense. it makes sense not seeing shaku honestly because you need to fit in the questing adventures because it's so good against all these reno decks. yeah and there's a lot of reno there, decks there yeah. are so many reno decks that you can't bring rogue without the questing in in my opinion yeah would you disagree no i i, I like the questing a lot I like the conceal a lot i think that it gives you a second wave of attacks. If you get to turn five and you get your opponent down to four and they Reno, you just make a questing, conceal it, and do it all again. Reno's fantastic Not because necessarily after your opponent's like blown their win condition, you get to jam the Reno, and you're like, okay, I just negated your win condition. Traditionally, Rogue, in, in this type of playstyle, only having that one primary avenue to victory. Questing Adventure, you just drop that after the Reno's already dropped it, and you have that second win condition. Now, Shaku is going to be in the hand here alongside that Van Cleef. Yeah, kept them both. This is the one time you can talk about pick order. The players might come down to game difference as a tiebreaker. So Zigzo will pick in order of which he thinks are his most favoured matchups. So we will get some insight into how Zigzo sees these matches. And there's been a lot of debate about Rogue versus Mage. And Zigzo is playing a variant on Rage's deck, which is the version that people are saying could beat Rogue. And he thinks he's favoured because he's picked it straight away. Yeah, it's really interesting. This is one of the matchups that I think we've just been chatting about the most and no one's really agreed. We've gone back and forth. Now, the, the thing is, we, we have said that this variant of Rage's list is the one that's definitely favored against Rogue. Do, what is the main thing that allows that to happen? So, I, I struggled with this because I was one of the people who thought that Mage was just favored end of for a long long time and then i saw the show match i've spoken to people since who know what they're actually doing and yeah. as opposed to my conjecturing and one of the things is think about it backwards think about it how is freeze mage against rogue now take out some cards and put in some garbage you're still kind of freeze mage yeah okay so th when you picture it that way it becomes a lot more clear as to what's going on and even though that's not quite the right way to look at it, that's the basic way to explain it and to picture it. Now you've got all the freeze, you've got all the, the difficulty to, to in being killed in one turn. Or all the people who are watching who are just breaking into this new meta. Because this meta is very new. This is all based off of Mean Streets, and yep. this is the biggest tournament since Mean Streets has come out. Now Shaku going to rumble on through, get that first card, and Arcane Intellect definitely being an impressive pickup here. And it looks like that is going to settle his turn. Yeah, interesting that he chose to do it straight away. He had the option to save it just one turn and maybe preparation into it and drop yeah, down an did, Edwin with it. He did have the prep. Uh, an option he could have used. But yeah, the, the freeze basically means that the conceal is not so good. That's one of the problems. So that they Very can frost over your Very concealed true. adventure and then try to deal with it when it comes back up. 
Whereas in the other version, you only really have Blizzard to slow it down, or maybe the, a Polymorph. The gas for 6-0 here would definitely be to draw into that Frost Nova and to back that up with the Doomsayer. Yeah. That, that allows you to deal with pretty much anything that is going to be thrown at you. P Patch is definitely not a great draw here, but LB Dutch Boy should be able to fix that up nice and easy. He can play that Gazigdan with double prep next turn. He's got a lot of choices he can make. He may want to just play the patches with the Cold Blood, for instance, uh, to take down this 5-5. So, he, and then he can maybe play a big Edwin. Just depends how he sees it, which way he wants to generate the, the win condition for this deck right now. I feel that he needs to deal with his 5-5. That is one of the only ways of doing with it that makes much sense. And if he's going to go this way, I think we'll see him try and force down an Edwin. Yeah, and we are going to see patches. Get the coldest blood here. Okay, he's gonna he's gonna take his time. There is no real reason to just stick down a I guess a eight eight or ten ten Edwin and get it polymorphed. And also you do pull answers really well with that tomb pillager. And that's one of the things that you do have to do here. You yeah. have to pull that toolkit away from 6-0, try to get somewhat of a card advantage, and just pu put the mage in an awkward position. Now, this potion is going to be really big for him, obviously. And it looks like he decided to go with that 10-mana potion out of Kazakis. Yeah, he's going to just get that value. His hand's good enough that he's going to get to turn 10 and beyond. So he can afford to be as greedy as you want. And again, you want the Polymorph, so you can just get rid of all of their concealed questings, their concealed Edwins. Exactly. Earlier and mentioned the fact that maybe getting the Frost Nova alongside the Doomsayer is a really powerful play here. You're pretty much ensuring an effect like that that's going to interact with those concealed minions by taking that 10 mana potion. And Dutch Boy is going to have a crazy auctioneer turn here. He's going to try and go through his deck. He'll be hoping to pick up like Fan of Knives and that sort of stuff. Just to cycle through like crazy. Yeah, counterfeit Ooh, coins. That's going to help. Beautiful. That's one of the cards he would definitely have wanted. And now he's going to get into a position where he can set up a potential turn 8 crazy turn with Edwin and Questing and just conceal them both. Because he's going to go through a lot of cards here. Playing three coins this turn, most likely. Might decide to go hold on play. to one here, but I, I say just jam yeah, just, out. Yeah, just jam some boy. stuff and do it especially, quickly. Especially when you are in this position. You're already up two. If you do manage to win this, th these high-risk plays with just kind of going all in, playing all those coins, that pays off in this particular position time and time again. You just got to win one game. Yeah, he needs to stop thinking, though. He needs to do something instinctive here and just get on with it because there's a world here where he plays... A lot of preparations, though he probably saves that for the Edwin turn now if he's going this slowly. There's a world where the Swash Burglar throws out a card he wants to cycle, and he's going to have to do this quickly on the rope. These animations do take time, unless you're Noxious and queue up like 16 of them at once. Noxious has the most insane APM. He really does. He should be like casting one of the other games, I suspect. 14-14, <laughs> have Polymorph or lose. That is definitely a formidable body, but it... Sixo should have an answer to this here. I mean, he can just blizzard. Yeah, blizzard and get rid of the auctioneer is one thing he can at least do to buy time. Is that his best choice, though? That seems kind of sad. He can solely into the potion as well. Yeah, not picking up the sheep trans translator or whatever you want to call it. Converter. <laughs> Polymorpha. What, what potion did he actually get here? It is a little bit tricky to see. It, it, I don't think he got the sheep. I think he got... The, the second part looked particularly poor, uh, but we didn't get to see because we don't get to see the mouse cursor. And I wasn't quick enough to get the first parts. Yeah, that that is one of the tricky things about the potion. But we were talking about the rope just a little bit. Now we're talking about the potions. Yesterday, we saw that really hurt Perna. Perna was actually in a position where he dropped the Kazakis and he's picking his potions and he did it a little too close to the rope and he, he ended up picking the wrong potion. Yeah, and then yeah, then called an admin and said, hey, the potion that I... Okay, we're going to see that arcane intellect here. So I was told by production too, it is the 8 damage potion. Oh, okay, so he's got good options here next turn with the Ink Master and the, the 10 potion. So he's actually not scared of dying here. Right, he's going to eat gonna one lot Torino. of 40. And he should be fine to do that. And he has a lot of options because he can't even solely... But look at potion. this yeah. disgusting whatever's about to happen. Archmage Antonidas making fireballs for rogues. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, that's not supposed to happen. <laughs> <laughs> 14 damage coming on through, 7 health left for 6-0.
Do you have to Reno here? Oh, I think you do. Well, no, because... You just he... lose anyway. You lose to anything that Rogue normally does. As it happens, well, there no, isn't lethal be, in hand. You but... should be able to... Oh, oh yeah. You could solely a Kazakis potion, though. It's just not pretty. So you have to... Oh, sorry, no. It's... You can't even Reno and freeze... This is not fun if you're Zixo right now. Yeah, he's just in that awkward position where if he had one more mana, you could Reno freeze, buy time that way. But as it happens, we can see that he's not dead. Well, <laughs> but I, he's going to lose, but he's not dead. Even if you clear the board, Fireball... Yeah, it's, it's 27, and, and Zixo will be thinking, well, there's got to be three damage in the hand of the Rogue. As it happens, it's not there at the moment, but it'll be there soon enough. Well, he does know that the fireball is there. Yeah, he hasn't seen. He's seen one cold blood. He hasn't seen an eviscerate. He thinks he's dead, and he doesn't even bother to see if the rogue's got it. He concedes an LB Dutch boy, three zeroing the first series of the day. Not what we expected. Definitely not what not we expected. What we expected, but very well played there from Dutch boy. And you saw how well he was concentrating when he had that priest game one, but still made sure to get as much value as he could. Uh, some people just start racing in that situation, especially under pressure. But Dutch Boy just took his time, made sure he turned the 99% into a package for that. And this matchup, when you actually play the mirror, is really, really complicated compared to just hit them in the face. You have to make sure that you don't run out of steam and you have to be efficient. And you also have to keep counting that you're not just going to win or lose next turn. Upgrade might be the right line here for LB Dutch Boy, just to kind of slow down the early game that Sixo has come out with. Yeah, I'm just wondering if he can coin out the War Axe and then upgrade it into the Blood Cell, but then he won't have the coin anymore, so it, it's upgrades mana efficient, head, but it's yeah. kind of slow and it's also wasteful because of your War Axe. So this one, I mean, this this decision right here, right now, is already massively difficult. And he'll probably coin out the War Axe into Blood Cell and then upgrade on turn three and hope he's picked up something else to do. That would be my guess. Yeah, that's not bad. I mean... It does still deal with these pirates pretty well. And when, you, when you're topping out at five drops and six drops, he should have something else by then to, to fill out the curve. Yeah, the coin gets a lot less useful as you move into those, uh, to turn three or four. Mm -hmm. Small time Buccaneer is going to slam on down four six zero, followed up by the South Sea Deckhand, which is going to be able to rumble through for two damage, followed up by that hook. Yeah, and this is just old school Zigzag. Let's play the deck that kills my opponent the fastest. Back to when he used to try and get number one legend a lot. And yeah, back, back when he actually tried hard on stream. And yeah, he, he just likes hitting people in the face. He thinks it's one of the best things you can do in this game. The person who's got the initiative is so far in front a lot of the time. And you can see here, Dutch Boy is well on the back foot already. Yeah, but a nice draw for Dutch Boy, uh, getting the South Sea deckhand, going to bring out patches from his deck, and that does allow him to actually get the Blood Sail Raider out with the upgrade onto the weapon as well. Yeah, full clear if he wants it. He, he may just choose to put the four into the face, but see what he wants to do. He wants to clear up, and that means that Zigzo has to start a game, but he's got the perfect card to start a game with. Yeah, definitely, but I will say, as much as LB Dutch Boy was on the back foot, he's springing back into the game pretty quickly here. Yeah, there'll be um, no messing around from Zigzo in terms of looking after his weapon charges here. He's got to get through... He's got five more weapon charges in this game. And if the game goes past turn eight, it would be pretty surprising. So we'll see him attacking with something every single turn, you would think, here. Yeah, I mean, he does need to clear up the six body fire. Yep. War Axe is going to do just that. And now, if the South Sea Captain, if he finds something uh, like that 2-1 minion, he could potentially kind of go off with that Captain. A captain. Yeah, and Dutch Boy is going to be counting damage. He's got 14 damage here if you count everything does one one attack. So the Leroy, the Corcoran Elite, the Mortal Strike, that's 14. He's just got to find about another eight on top of that. So Corcoran Elite attacking again, that's four of that eight. He's nearly got enough for just lethal damage in his hand. Getting that upgrade with the Arcanite Reaper, and now also his minion is going to have priority here. Zixo still looking very strong. Finley going to be the draw for LB Dutch Boy. Yeah, really, really important here. He's the one who's trying to force through the damage because of how his hand is structured. So he doesn't particularly want the the warrior power. And difficult decision for him here, but... Doesn't particularly want either of these hero powers as well. I mean, right. much rather see either the warlock hero power or even the hunter one. 
Fire Blast might be the move here. Yeah, I think it'll be Fire Blast. The Instinct is Dagger Mastery, but there's too many weapons in your deck. And so if you take the... Yeah, okay, so he's going for... Just for more stuff, he might get a taunt, he might get a 1-1, one, one. there might be some spell damage to go with another mortal what strike. What do you think about taking uh, the totems here, overtaking that fire blast? Yeah, I'm interested to see what it works well with. I'm, I'm missing the point slightly here, but he could get a taunt. And I mean, the taunt, when you, you are seeing that 6-0 had quite a lot of weapons, uh, I do see the potential upside there, especially, like, that could be, if he gets that the taunt totem, he could soak up six damage. Well, the other thing is, you do have to deal with the totems if you're the opposition, because otherwise you get all four of them, and then you roll a taunt totem every single turn. So they do demand answering at some point. That is quite far off, though, right? Actually being able to amass that totem army. Sure. Uh, Especially with a deck like this, this mirror matchup being one of the fastest ones. And it is quite refreshing because we have been seeing quite a lot of these Reno mirrors uh, throughout yep. this entire tournament. Yep. It's just one of those tournaments where you're either bringing a bunch of decks that counter Reno or just bringing Reno. Yeah, and it's nice just to see people smashing each other in the face the old-fashioned way. Uh, Zigzo here does have lethal damage in hand with the two sixes from the Arcanite and the deck hand, but the taunts muddle that equation, so he's decided to... Tidy up the board, this protects his 8-3 and presents a huge problem for Dutch Boy to deal with. South Sea deckhands have been popping up all over this matchup. We've seen just about every single one. Right, Leroy, because the Torn Totem is there, he can trade into one of the whelps. Oh, he's going to kill off this, sorry. He can trade into one of the whelps as well. And both players just cancelling each other out, running out of stuff. And these totems are actually an irritant now. Yeah, I really do think the totems pretty strong line here. I mean, it's allowing Dutch Boy to kind of trade out over and over again and hopefully just grind this match out. Yep. Six damage, though, is still going to connect with the face. Your 6 so you got to be happy about that. He's going to pop another weapon into, into his hands again. It's going to be another rusty hook. And on the other side of that totem decision, obviously, if this was a fire blast now, it'd be going pew, pew, pew and killing all of these guys over a period of a couple of turns. And as he hasn't got that now, he is having to rely on his his decent card advantage to finish it off. But you're on seven health. You need to change this around, and you need to change it around right now. Another taunt, though, in his hand. Dread Corsair, I mean, definitely wanting a weapon at this point in the match, but not finding one. Rusty Hook, alongside of the two minions on the board, 4-6-0, could deal with this Corsair. Mortal Strike. And that's an interesting pickup because obviously it can do six to face at any point if he goes below 13, so it goes to 12 or fewer. So he may choose to hold it or he may choose to just use it now to force damage through. But I feel like if you're 6-0 at this point, you feel pretty comfor comfortable. You can probably hold on to the mortal strike, pluck through once with that rusty hook, wait for the chip damage. There aren't too many impressive bodies on Dutch Boyd's side of the board. The other side of that, though, is... Th that thing I was saying about getting the four totems is, is getting close now for Dutch Boy. And if that does happen, uh, Zigzo is going to find it very difficult to just get that last piece of damage through. So uh, Sixo potentially being scared of that is going to take the line that you suggested, going to just poke in with that damage right now. Hand completely empty here, going to armor up yet again. All right, and just to emphasize that, he chose to kill the 1-1 one -one there, not the 2-1, because the 1-1 one -one was the totem that is threatening to build the full board. Uh, so he actually is removing the lesser minion in the interest of stopping the, the totems getting out of hand. And while we were talking about that, we did see that Frothing Berserker get picked up. Now that is a very real win condition for yep. LB Dutch Boy here. This next draw going to be very important for 6-0. Upgrade not really going to cut it. Right, so he's going to have to go face and try and pick up a way to win the game here. Yeah, plucking on He's He one damage if... The 50-50 totem roll doesn't come through. Dutch Boy has a 50-50 to roll the spell damage. And it, that's going to be close to lethal. I'm not sure if it is or not. No, it's not close enough. It's quite a way off, in fact. Yeah, it's early in the morning here, guys, in China. a lot of work to do. I have absolutely no time, uh, no idea what time it is, Lorinda. That is one thing I it need to come clean about time right now. This jet lag is absolutely bonkers. South Sea Captain going to be a little slow here, going to rumble on through for that two damage, but this 6-4 Frothing Berserker looks like it's going to seal Dutch Boy's fate. Yeah, the Heroic Strike is just enough, unless I've miscounted twice, but I don't think I have. Pretty sure he's got this, and LB Dutch Boy is going to take a 1-0 lead, unless I've miscounted, which I may have. I believe in you, Lorinda. I, I believe in your counting skills. There we go. Phew. That that is, that that's that's a dead 6-0. You counted, right? <laughs> now that is going to put LB uh, 
Dutch Boy ahead here. Now he's got a Shaku Rogue, he, and he's got a Dragon Priest left to win with. I do really like bringing that Shaku Rogue uh, into this into this field. Yeah, Rogue's an interesting deck right now. Um, does he have questings in there as well? I thought he did, but my mo notes may be mistaken. And yeah, he does. So he he's does. questing and he Shaku. He's questing and Shaku. Wow. That's a lot. That is a lot of conceal That's going the on. The weird thing with Shaku is Shaku is just in that slot for Rogue. So it's one of mm -hmm. the hardest hardest slots to justify cutting. Like it, like Shaku makes you cut something in the three drop a lot right. of times. And that's that's always been a very good good drop for Rogue. Yeah, definitely with the SI sevens and the questing to choose from. And yeah, that's why we're seeing a lot of SIs wow. get cut. We're also seeing Shaku get cut a lot. We're also seeing Dutch Boy winning the winning the battle of the mind games or or the dice, depending which way they chose their decks here. And Dutch Boy's got this good matchup with the priest versus the the re going to be good, but they just run out of stuff. Even if a doomsayer goes off, the, the priest incredibly manages to outvalue the mage most of the time. Okay. But if the mage is going to win, this is a hand you might win with. Grand just getting thrown down here, going to demand an answer. I don't mind playing the Nether Spite Historian into this. Picks up an important dragon here as well. So this this Twilight Whelp could be a 2-5 if you want it. Yeah, I spoke a little too soon. Shadow Word Pain was in the hand of yeah. Dutch Boy. That's going to be an easy clear here. And he is playing a Twilight Drake and he has Bran on the...